preference student. I know, man. It was like oh. the same class it was yesterday. Those are my preference students. New ones. Okay, guys. Welcome. Uh, yesterday we checked the refrigeration cycle, no? And uh, we talked about <coughs> the how important is the, the refrigerant, no? The refrigerant is is the secret, no? Because uh, what is the property of the refrigerant that is magic? Excuse me? No, but it's the property is that uh, that substance, depending on the pressure, what happened? Absorb or release heat. Yeah? What happened when the refrigerant is passing through the pipes internally in your home? The refrigerant is doing what? Absorbing heat. And uh, when the refrigerant is on the pipes outside of your home, the refrigerant is releasing heat. That's the secret. That's the secret. Yeah? It's absorbing heat internally and releasing heat outside. Oh, wow. This is the unique uh, substance with that property. No, that the hydraulic fluid. No, no, no. Only, only refrigerant. That's, that's incredible. But uh, it's because the composition, chlorine, fluorine, carbon, and hydrogen. Later, we are going to talk about that. OK, guys, we are going to refresh quickly the cycle of refrigeration in that unit. Uh, once again, the cycle starts in what point? Compressor. On the compressor, no? How is, how is uh, the condition of the refrigerant uh, when, the, when the refrigerant is at normal ambient temperature? Is vapor? Is liquid? Vapor. Is? It's vapor. It's vapor. It's vapor because uh, you remember what is the boiling point of the refrigerant? Minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. At that point, at that temperature, it's boiling. Can you imagine? It's boiling at that frozen point. For you and me, that temperature is too cold, but uh, for the refrigerant, it's too hot. No, at that point, it's boiling. Ah, what happened at, at, at ambient temperature? <laughs> it's boiling. It's vapor. It's gas. Clear? All right. The compressor have two two feedings. One feeding for input, and other feeding for output or discharge. The output feeding. Once again, the output feeding is discharge or high pressure feeding. And the input feeding is suction or low pressure feeding. Okay, we are going to check in the future the pressure in the low pressure side and the pressure in the high pressure side with the set of a pressure gauge. And according with those pressures, I can say the, the, the unit is good, the unit need a little more refrigerant, yeah, because the pressure. The, the only tool that you need to diagnose an air conditioned unit is the pressure gauge. That's it. With the pressure gauge, you know what happened. Not only, any other. No, with the multimeter, no, with the multimeter, you can verify if the capacitors are good or not. But uh, the condition of the unit is with the pressure gauge. Any other tool. According with the pressure in the low pressure side and the pressure in the high pressure side, you know if the refrigerant is doing the cycle. All right, what happened? What happened when the compressor suctioned the, the refrigerant and compressed the refrigerant? How much is the pressure in the output side? You remember? The pressure here in the output side is in between 180 and 220, no? And, uh, and uh, the temperature is around in between 100 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, but uh, what about the, the refrigerant, the, the state of the refrigerant when the refrigerant enters in the compressor? Is? Vapor. Is vapor. What about the state of the refrigerant in the output? Vapor. Is vapor at high pressure and high temperature. A little later, a couple of inches later, it start to become Liquid, start to vapor to liquid, condensate, no? Start to condensate. For that reason, what is the name of that unit? Condenser. Condenser. Because the refrigerant passed from vapor 
to liquid. Ah, okay. And what about the temperature of those pipes? Too hot. What is the function of the raw water passing around the pipe with refrigerant? What is the function of the raw water? Cool the pipes and help in the process of condensation. Is clear? All right. What happens if the flow of raw or of raw water is interrupted or no raw water passing? What happens with the temperature of the pipe? And what happens with the pressure? The pressure of the refrigerant here. And for that reason, in this side, in this side, normally you have one high pressure switch. When the pressure passes the limit to 20, 25, the, 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 the switch is normally closed, open, interrupt the, the current, and the motor of the compressor stop, and no more compressor. If the compressor stops, the cycle of re refrigeration stops, and the unit stops. Anybody follow me? The cycle of refrigeration depends on the operation of the compressor. Good. Can you bypass the switch? No, no, because you can uh, you can uh, melt at the pipes or you can explode the compressor. No, 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 no. no that switch is safety switch. It's for safety. I have, a, I think I have a one piece of a, a pipes uh, uh, melted because somebody jumped those cables. No, that solution. No, be careful with that. Never, not, never try to bypass switches. Never, never, never. You remember in a, in a, in gas and diesel engines, especially in diesel, you have a two kill switches. You remember? One uh, for pressure, oil pressure, other for uh, temperature, located in the thermostat housing. No, if you if you bypass those, you, you don't have indication that the pressure continue going up, up or down, 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 and uh, you you destroy the engine. What happens if the oil pressure decreases below 20 psi? The oil, the oil, the motor oil, the engine oil. If the pressure of the oil decreases below 20 psi, what happens? The pressure switch. Uh, no, you destroy the bearings. You destroy the bearings. No, be, be careful with that. Never switch. Never bypass the switch. How does the compressor turn on? Excuse what me. Turns on the compressor? Okay, the compressor receives the signal from the thermostat. This is the next step. The thermostat in, in your home, you select the temperature. And you hear that outside ding, start the compressor. Yes or not? And, uh, and you want to stop the compressor outside, you increase the temperature. Dun, 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 more, 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 more. And you hear that the compressor shoot down. Yes or not? Yeah. This is in your home, in your car. In your car, you put low, 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 low temperature, blue, blue, blue side, low temperature, and you hear that the compressor in your car engage. Ah, you. Increase the temperature, increase the temperature, and the compressor is disconnected. The compressor depends on the thermostat. You decide in what moment the compressor starts. If you want hot air, the compressor is still on, right? Yeah, but wait a little. Okay, great. That's fine. Okay. The, compre the, the, the refrigerant becomes liquid. Liquid, high pressure, liquid, 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 high pressure, and pass here. What is this? Uh, really, really, this is the expansion valve or capillary pipe. But uh, this one before of this is, is the filter dryer. Filter dryer. Is this. Look at this. The refrigerant it's going out, high pressure, high temperature, high pressure, high temperature, enter here in the filter dryer. And after that, the diameter is reduced in this capillary pipe. What happens when the diameter is reduced here? What happens with the pressure and the temperature of the refrigerant inside of this? Goes down dramatically. And this pipe is practically frozen. And here in the bottom, enter Enter, enter 
the refrigerant and start to evaporate, evaporate, because this is ambient temperature passing here, the blower start, passing the ambient temperature around the frozen pipes, and you receive here what? Cold air. No? Here is the filter dryer, is this one. No, no, look, this is the dryer with filter, you see? Internally, in this unit, internally in this unit, normally you have the strainer, and you have a, a substance that uh, absorbs humidity. That substance is a hygroscopic substance. What is the meaning of hygroscopic? You have the filter, and you have a substance that is hygroscopic absorb moisture, absorb water. Let me explain something. You remember the salt in your home? In order to avoid that the salt absorb water, because the salt absorb a lot of water, you added pieces of rice. rice, because the rice absorb more water than the salt. And the, the humidity is absorbed for the rice, and the salt stay dry all the time. The, the, the rice is a hygroscopic substance, absorb humidity. You know those bags that you buy to put in your closet to absorb humidity? It, this is a hygroscopic substance. Here, inside of the filter and dryer, you have the filter, and you have that inside of the filter uh, particles of a, a hygroscopic substance to absorb humidity. But uh, no, replace that filter is difficult. You need to cut the pipes and solder in again. It's, no. I never replaced that one. It's part of the, the system. Let me ask you a question. If, if, the, if you had humidity and you resolved the humidity issue, the, whatever moisture that's in there, does it eventually go away or it just no. Uh, no. stays there and no. the Yeah. This is designed, this equipment is designed to work six years, seven years. After seven years, this element is saturated of humidity. Okay. And you need to replace the, 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 the entire system. You can't just place that, replace that line? Ah, some, some people buy the units, use unit, replace that one, connect the vacuum pump. The vacuum pump, the function of the vacuum pump later, we are going to talk about that, is absorb humidity. Absorb the humidity of the system and recharge the system again and sell the unit again in Craigslist. Well, it's not bad, <laughs> but uh, but it's used at unit. You know? right. Excuse me? They don't make those with easily replaceable. No, ones no, cars. no. Because if that, the people try to remove and replace and that introduce humidity, good. never vacuum the system and destroy the system. For that reason, it's not easy replace. So it's a little. I saw like a little pin. Here? Yeah, what is that? Yeah, because in one side, the diameter enter big diameter. In the other side, the diameter is too small. Those are the, the, different, the different fittings internally for a small and big diameter. Everybody follow me? That's the function. What is the function of this? Collect moisture. Collect moisture. Because you, you don't have dirt. It's a closed system, no? Humidity, yes. When you, when you connect the fittings, with the set of a gauge, when you connect, when you try to add a refrigerant, you introduce humidity. Or if the lines are cracked, you introduce humidity. That, that, that's, that, that's clear, my friend? Let me explain something. This unit in particular, this unit in particular, the condenser is located in the engine room, and the evaporator is located in the cabin in the closet, no? and the lines with refrigerant, the lines with refrigerants are from this point to that point. The name of that unit is a split unit, because the condenser is separated from the evaporator, separated. Yeah? One pipe, the high pressure pipe, that one, is too, too, too hot. And the return lines are too cold. For that reason, those lines should be isolated. 
we found. You remember in the boat, those lines in your home are isolated with foam to avoid condensation of a humidity environment. What is the name of that unit? A split unit. Oh, there are other units. Look at this unit. The evaporator is here, and the compressor with the coil of the compressor is here. In other words, the unit is, is together. This is a self-contained unit. Condenser and evaporator together, not separated. You understand? This okay, is this is good for a small boat. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, is the split unit better in the sense only because you might yeah. have space in the... The people every day replace those split units for one reason. One reason. Get this one. A lot of refrigerant in between this and this in the pipes. A lot of possibilities that a other contractor doing a hole in the ball heads perforate those un those lines. No? It's very common. Or installing a, a, a screw. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Right. Order why you do that. Been there done that. Had a nail gun hit a water line that got put there. Yeah. yeah. It's very common. For that reason, in the majority of the boats, they replace those chiller un those uh, split units for other system. Wonderful system that I am going to explain next week is the chiller system. Okay, but uh, there are a lot of boats with a split unit, and there are a lot of captains and boat openers that they prefer a split unit. They love it, a split unit. Other people love it, those self-contained units. Because it's practical, it's easy to install, both of them are together, it's okay. Yeah, there are different situations.